Good evening. Welcome to Evening Prayer. My name is the Reverend Paul Lavender. I'm the Senior Pastor at Mount Pleasant Baptist Church here in Northampton. Thank you for joining me for prayer tonight. Trust you've had a good day. The weather's been glorious here. And I pray that you've uh, had an enjoyable day, and that you're safe and fit and well. And that those nearest and dearest to you, wherever they may be, uh, are well too. And that they know that they're loved and that they're special in God's sight and in your hearts too. So as we gather together this evening to pray, let's bow our heads now and remember the presence of the Lord with us now. Today, at the beginning of our prayer, morning and evening, we're reading through Psalm 18. This evening I begin reading in Psalm 18 and verse 31. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock besides our God? The God who girded me with strength and made my way safe. He made my feet like the feet of a deer and set me secure on the heights. He trains my hands for war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. You have given me the shield of your salvation and your right hand has supported me. Your help has made me great. You gave me a wide place for my steps under me, and my feet did not slip. I pursued my enemies and overtook them, and did not turn back until they were consumed. I struck them down so that they were not able to rise. They fell under my feet. For you girded me with strength for the battle. You made my assailants sink under me. You made my enemies turn their backs to me, and those who hated me, I destroyed. They cried for help, but there was no one to save them. They cried to the Lord, but he did not answer them. I beat them fine like dust before the wind. I cast them out like the mire of the streets. You delivered me from strife with the peoples. You made me head of the nations. People whom I had not known served me. As soon as they heard of me, they obeyed me. Foreigners came cringing to me. Foreigners lost heart and came trembling out of their strongholds. The Lord lives. Blessed be my rock and exalted be the God of my salvation, the God who gave me vengeance and subdued peoples under me, who delivered me from my enemies. Indeed, you exalted me above my adversaries. You delivered me from the violent. For this I will extol you, O Lord, among the nations, and sing praises to your name. Great triumphs he gives to his king, and shows steadfast love to his anointed, to David and his descendants forever. Thanks be to God for his word. Let us pray. O oh God, you are light, and in you there is no darkness at all. Give us grace, no longer to walk in darkness, but to walk in the light. To live by the truth, to have fellowship with you and with one another, purified from all sin by the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Most merciful God and Father, give us true repentance for our sins. Open our eyes to recognise the truth about ourselves, so that acknowledging our faults, our weaknesses and our failures, we may receive your forgiveness and find in your love the encouragement to make a new beginning. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of life and the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue in our Bible readings from Job 
And tonight we read in chapter 32, the first 14 verses. The words of Job are ended. So these three men ceased to answer Job because he was righteous in his own eyes. Then Elihu, son of Barachel, the Buzzite of the family Ram, became angry. He was angry at Job because he justified himself rather than God. He was angry also at Job's three friends because they had found no answer, even though they declared Job to be in the wrong. Now Elihu had waited to speak to Job because they were older than he. But when Elihu saw that there, were no, there was no answer in the mouths of these three men, he became angry. Elihu, son of Barachel the Buzzite, answered, I am young in years and you are aged. Therefore, I was timid and afraid to declare my opinion to you. I said, let days speak and many years teach wisdom. But truly, it is the spirit in a mortal, the breath of the Almighty, that makes for understanding. It is not the old that are wise, nor the aged that understand what is right. Therefore, I say, listen to me. Let me also declare my opinion. See, I waited for your words. I listened for your wise sayings while you searched out what to say. I gave you my attention, but there was in fact no one that confuted Job, no one among you that answered his words. Yet do not say we found wisdom. God may vanquish him, not a human. He has not directed his words against me, and I will not answer him with your speeches. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. Verse 8 of Job 32, the words of Elihu, the young man who speaks to Job, he says, It is the spirit in the mortal, the breath of the Almighty, that makes for understanding. Do you remember the days, or the day of Pentecost, when Peter gets up and preaches and he quotes from the prophet Joel? And he recalls the words where God promises to pour out his spirit on all flesh, that his sons and his daughters will prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. When I pour out, God says, my spirit on all flesh. You see, it is God's spirit within us that makes for understanding. And oh, how in every situation, whatever it is with which we're confronted, we need God's new life within us. Anywho has a great insight here that actually it's not the wisdom of the age necessarily, nor the inexperience of the young or their boldness that make for dynamic Christian living so much as being open to the activity of God within our lives. And whether it's to turn us around in a new direction or whether it's to encourage us to keep on being faithful to what we know to be right. God's Spirit is able to lead and guide us in all righteousness and to be truthful in our following of him. And so may God help us tonight to be open to the breath of the Almighty within us. That ruach, that's the Hebrew word, the breath of God. To be, as it were, the oxygen in our lungs so that we may breathe God, his life may sustain us and empower us in his service. Let's confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We bring our intercessions to the Lord. And firstly tonight, we pray for the church in Sri Lanka. That God would strengthen it and protect it and provide for the needs of church leaders amongst so much hostility from government and religious opposition. We pray that God would help the relief effort as they seek to bring to those who are in need practical support during this time of COVID-19 pandemic affecting the island. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And then we pray that God would renew our experience of him. Lord, may your spirit fill our lives afresh. As we call you by your name, may your name bring your promises to us as we remember that you are our provider, you are our shepherd, you are our guide, you are our redeemer, you are our Lord, and so much else beside. Lord, may we know that you are with us as you have always been, trustworthy and hidden, and yet close to us in every situation in life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Teach us, O God, not to torture ourselves, not to make martyrs of ourselves through stifling reflection, but rather teach us to breathe deeply in faith through Jesus our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring our own intercessions and intentions to the Lord now in a moment of quiet prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We share together in saying the prayer which Jesus gave us as a pattern to pray saying in whatever language or form is common to us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So may God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, give you the Spirit to make you wise and reveal Christ to you, so that you may know him better. May the eyes of your heart be opened to see his light, to know the hope to which he has called you, and the riches of glory he promises to his people, his power available to all who believe. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and with those whom you love. With God's people everywhere this night and forevermore. Amen. God bless you this evening. Thank you for joining me for evening prayer. I appreciate your friendship and your fellowship, your partnership in this ministry. May the Lord keep us close to himself tonight. Give us peace, rest and sleep. And tomorrow may we rise to serve him with fresh vigour and desire. Look forward to being with you again at nine o'clock in the morning. And uh, may God richly bless you tonight. Good night. <laughs>